Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Jake with Legacy 4x4 here again, and today we're going to be finishing up my shop extension video series. So as you guys can see behind me, I just finished doing some of the wiring. I got the lights installed along the whole shop. I have a total of eight of these cheap LED lights that you can buy on Amazon. They're $35 for two of them, and they come with an E26 style socket, which is just a normal screw-in type socket, and they connect pretty easily to any kind of uh, wire or electrical source. So what I did is I wired up the top of the shop to have, there's two outlets, one in the front of the shop, one in the rear of the shop that are controlled by a switch, and then I ran all of these lights into those two outlets via just some standard power cords. I actually cut up some old lights that had um, standard plug-in extensions, and I just used those, cut off the tips, and plugged them into these lights. Super simple to do. Uh, I went ahead and did that off camera because I was doing it kind of on my off time during the week, but now we're gonna get started on the rest of the wiring. So we're gonna start this by running the 115 back through the rest of the shop. So I already started, I took the stuff that was right here and I pushed it over to that wall over there because that was the light switch and one of the outlets, but now we're gonna run the rest of them. To do this, I'm gonna be running uh, some armored cable. I'm using 12-2 cable. The only reason I'm using the armored cable and not just running like um, loose wire or anything is because the whole front of the shop was wired with armored cable and it makes sense in a shop like this where I'm throwing things around and I'm doing sparks and everything else to protect the cables some kind of way. So I picked up some of the armored cable and I'm gonna run that for the 115 throughout the shop. Let's go ahead and get started on that part of this project. I'm wiring this the exact same way the rest of the shop is wired, making sure the colors are all coordinated, and I'm using a lot of the old wiring to start uh, what I've got going on here in the back of the shop. So it's kind of taking me a little bit of time because i got to pull an outlet off, make sure the wires match the way I want them to match, and then push that to the next one, on and on and on. It just takes a little bit of time. But to quickly show you guys what I'm using to do this, again, I'm using armored cable, and so if you're going to use AC cable, you have to use, you have to use some kind of uh, bushing type thing. It's these little guys are what the rest of the shop has, so this is what I'm using. They've got an anti-short bushing, this little red portion here, and then this metal clip, which pinches into those metal boxes that I use throughout the shop to wire everything up. These are pretty cool. Um, they make a nice clean install too, which is kind of nice. So I've got to install those. I just use the grinder with a cutoff wheel to cut the wire to the rough length, and then to cut the sheathing off of the wire, I picked up one of these little Klein tools. Uh, these are specifically for cutting armored cable. They're like 30 bucks or so. Uh, they work pretty well. All they do is just cut the sheathing and you pull the little metal portion off and that's how you get the exposed wires that you need to wire up your boxes. So I'm making pretty good progress. I got to finish up this one outlet here and then I got to do, I'm doing another outlet kind of at the ceiling height directly above it because I'm going to mount my, my reel for my extension cord right next to where my reel for my hose is going to go for the air throughout the shop. So I'm going to do one more outlet up above that. Then we got to push it back, get the four-way outlet on the back of the shop and then get another outlet on the other side of the shop near the barn door, and then that should finish up for 115 volt back here. So anyways, let's keep moving. All right, so that finishes off the 115 volt wiring in the back of the shop. To cap you guys up on how many outlets we added, I'll go over it really quickly here. So on the barn door side, the side that's closest to my house, I added the light switch, which controls all of the lights inside the shop, as well as the exterior lights. I also added one 115 volt um, outlet at the top, kind of uh, pretty high up there next to where my speaker system is. That's where anything up high is gonna plug into, so the speakers and probably the electric reel for my extension cord. On the other wall of the shop, I added another outlet, a normal just two outlet right there, and then next to it I added a four 
a four position outlet a little farther down the wall. So there's a total of six outlets on the back side of the shop over there. And then on the very back wall of the shop, I just added one four outlet box on the back. I think that's gonna be plenty of electricity. I am gonna be running a 50 foot uh, reel off of these outlets as well. So I should have the ability to put electricity anywhere I need to in the shop. I was gonna add a few more because I was gonna add some ceiling mounted ones, but truthfully, this is taking a long time. I'm exhausted, it's really hot. So I'm gonna just stop those there so we can move on to doing the 240 volts. So with that said, let's go ahead and start wiring up the 240 volt outlets on the back of the shop. All right, so to run the airlines in the shop this time, I'm gonna be using a Maxline air system that I got on Amazon. I used to have a previously cheaper one that I was on Amazon as well, and it had like plastic fittings for most of it, and it just didn't work quite well enough for me. So this one has a thicker, a little stronger uh, piece of tubing, as well as you actually uses metal fittings and has uh, metal blocks for the drops. So total in this kit, it's a 100 foot kit. It comes with a total of four drop blocks. They're these little machined aluminum uh, blocks here. Comes with a whole assortment of different fittings to run the lines and some different angles and T's and things like that, as well as the tool you need to cut their PVC with. So I'm gonna run this the similar way to what I did on the last setup, but I'm gonna be running it uh, for a little bit longer throughout the entire shop. So we're gonna go from my dryers over there on the wall. And it's gonna come out of that and it's gonna go up and around the entire shop and provide air to every corner of the shop. I'm doing a total of four drops. The first drop is gonna be right here in vicinity of the 20 ton press and the sandblaster to provide the air for those two tools. I'll just use a split T um, on the hose to give those the air that they need. We're gonna do one more drop up here at the top next to where my electric reel is and I'm gonna mount my 50 foot uh, air hose reel and then we're gonna go one more drop over by the plasma table to provide the air for the plasma cutter. And it's gonna circle all the way around the side of the shop and out towards the front where I keep the Rogue Fab. And it's gonna provide the air for the Rogue Fab and any other air needs I might have at the front of the shop. Like say that I've got to run a long line uh, outside, maybe to fill up a tire or something like that and get it out of the shop. So there's gonna be one more drop at the front of the shop. Should be pretty quick, I think, to install this. But with that said, let's go ahead and get going. All right, so I just did the first little run right from those filters and then up to the top of the shop where the line's gonna run around. And my first impressions are that this tubing is way better than the stuff I used to have. Now, granted, it is twice the cost, but the tubing itself is more rigid and you can feel that it's a little stronger. You know, you can like feel the outside of it, you can feel that it's got a little bit more rigidity to it. Uh, and then not only that, it bends, and so it doesn't want to like spring out. It wants to hold one shape, which is kind of a nice touch. Onto their little fittings that they have here. This is obviously a T fitting, but the way this works is on the inside here, you have two O-rings and then a male nipple to go inside of the hose. And then you run down this little collared sleeve and this nut to pinch the whole thing together. So when you tighten it down, this collar um, tightens down around the tube, pinching it onto those O-rings, and then this holds the whole assembly into place, which is a really good design, and I'm pretty confident it's gonna result in far less leaks than what I used to have in the last air system. So I'm so far, uh, so far really impressed with this product. Uh, definitely think this is a better quality system than what I used to have. We'll see when I charge up the air compressor if it has the same problem that I had with the last one or not. But anyways, we got one line done. I'm gonna go ahead and just knock these things out and move on to the next project. All right, so kind of skip some steps. I've been doing this again with my free time as I had it available, but I got all the airlines ran. I tested the compressor and it works, so that's good. Quick note about those airlines. I am much happier with the installation of those than I was with the previous set. I ran it, it was much easier to run, it feels much more durable, and I definitely feel like it's a better product than what I had before. 
Time will tell if it's worth twice the cost of the previous setup, but there's definitely no leaks in it right now, and that's what I'm most happy about. I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around here of the shop in a second after I hang up the associated banners. Obviously, that's the most important and final step, and then we're gonna end this video here, and we're gonna move on to the next set of projects. I've got some small things to do on the shop still. I gotta paint it, and I gotta do some caulk and a little bit of trim work, but nothing too crazy, and it's not worth putting in this video. Once all that is finished and I get a chance to assemble a couple new toys, I will then uh, do a full shop walk around video for you guys so you guys can see, so that you guys can see what I have in my shop and what I use it for and how I make all of this stuff work in a relatively small space. Anyways, I'm gonna let the camera charge for a second. I'm gonna hang up these different banners and then I'm gonna show you guys around where we got in the shop. All right, here it is, all finished up. I know that Holly's Holly flag is backwards, but it's too late tonight. I'll flop it around later. But there she is. All finished up. All right, so you guys can see here, this is the shop extension. This is what it looks like. I will do a full walk around tour of the shop later on once I get a chance to put together a couple new tools. But this is what it looks like for now. I'm super excited with it. All right, so there it is, guys. That's the end of the shop extension video. This has been quite the project. It's taken me two months to do, working on the weekends, working on my free time at night. It's been a lot of work, but I'm extremely satisfied with the results.